Recall that we can initialize a local repository first and publish it to create a remote repository, or create the remote repository first and clone it to create the local repository. Or with VS Code, we can create both repositories at the push of a button. Let's assume we already have some code and we want to get it into version control using VS Code. We'll start by opening VS Code. Click the Source Control icon in the left toolbar. From here, we can work with Git and GitHub. Our current options are to clone an existing GitHub repository or open a folder. If these options are disabled, you may not have Git installed. Rewatch the prior clip for information on installing Git. Since we don't yet have a remote repository for our pet cafe, we can't clone it, so we'll select Open Folder. Navigate to the location of your pet cafe folder. Mine's under Documents. Click on the pet cafe folder and then click Select Folder. Depending on where the files in that folder came from, you may be asked whether you trust the authors of these files. Click Yes. And here is the code for the Pet Cafe project. Let's close the Get Started tab. When the Explorer icon is selected, the left toolbar displays the files and other folders within the Pet Cafe folder. Click the Source Control icon. And since our Pet Cafe folder is not currently tracked by Get, VS Code presents two options. We can initialize a Git repository, which creates a local repository in our Pet Cafe folder, but it doesn't create our remote repository. Or we can select Publish to GitHub, which does so much more. Let's go back to the slides for a moment. Selecting Publish to GitHub with an existing working folder initializes a local repository, stages all of the files that are in the working folder, commits the staged files, creates a remote GitHub repository, and pushes that commit to GitHub, all with a click of one button. Let's do that. Back in VS Code, click Publish to GitHub. If this is the first time you've used GitHub with VS Code, it walks you through a series of authorization steps. VS Code will ask for your permission to log in to GitHub. Click Allow. Then GitHub will pop up, asking you to authorize VS Code to access GitHub. Click Open Visual Studio Code. You may be asked to provide your GitHub password. You'll then be redirected back to VS Code to finish the authorization process. Click Open. The good news is that you'll only need to do this authorization one time. VS Code then gives us two options, Publish to a Private Repository, or to a public repository. Recall that public repositories are visible to everyone on GitHub, and private repositories are, well, private. We'll pick public repository. VS Code then shows us a list of the files that are in our working folder. We can uncheck any files we don't want to commit. We want to commit all of them, so we'll click OK. You may see some status messages here, and then a success notification. And now we have both a local and remote repository for our project. Yay! And the files in our Pet Cafe working folder are now being tracked by Git. In the notification, click Open on GitHub. If the notification disappears before you can click on it, click the notification icon to display it again. This opens GitHub, and we see our new remote repository. Sweet! Here are the files from our Pet Cafe folder. Click on a file to view it, and there's our code. Click on the repository name to go back. As we discussed earlier, it's a good idea to add a README file to each GitHub repository. So let's click on Add a README. It takes us into an editor so we can type our README text. By default, GitHub creates the README file with a .md extension, defining it as a markdown file. Like a simplified version of HTML, Markdown allows us to add special characters to our text for improved formatting. For example, the pound symbol here marks this text as a header. See the lesson links at the end of this lesson for more information about Markdown. Let's just add something short for now. I'll paste in some text. When we're finished with our edits, we scroll down to see the Commit button. 
Notice that GitHub defines a default commit message for us. Click the Commit button to commit the file. And we see the file now in our repository. We could use the Add File option to create other files as desired, including a license file. For code files, it's better to add them to the local repository first. Going back to VS Code, click Explorer, and we don't see the new README file we added. Any idea why? Because code changes in our GitHub repository don't automatically update our local repository. We need to pull them down. Click on the Source Control icon. Then click the three dots in the top toolbar to see more options. There are lots of Git commands here. Since this is a gentle introduction course, we'll focus on the key options. Check out the lesson links for more information about these options. Most commonly, we'll use push to push our local changes to GitHub, and pull to pull changes from GitHub to our local repository. Or we can do both at once and select Sync. This pulls any changes from GitHub and pushes our changes to GitHub. Let's do that. It displays a confirmation message. Notice that it lists the remote repository as origin slash main. Recall that origin is the default name GitHub gives to our remote repository. Main is the default primary branch. Click OK to perform the sync. It doesn't look like it did anything, but click on Explore, and we now see our README file. Success! Let's go back to the slides. So, we've now used VS Code's Git integration to create a local repository in the working folder, publish the local repository, creating the remote repository on GitHub, and sync the commit history between our local and remote repositories, all within VS Code. Now that we have both of our repositories in place, let's see how to commit files from VS Code.